evening and welcome to a very special evening, a conversation with Ramachandra Guha on his new book, The Commonwealth of Cricket. And he has here with him today, one of the heroes from his book, one of India's finest cricketers, still remembered as part of the formidable four spin bowlers of India, Vishan Singh Bedi. Welcome both of you to this conversation and to Maja House online. This is a somewhat somber day for us. It's the day that Bilu, my brother-in-law, died uh, 50 years ago at the very start of the 1971 Bangladesh war. His name is still inscribed on the gates of Maja House and therefore I wanted to say this today. Uh, Maja House is of course our literary and cultural space that we opened in March, 2018 here in Amritsar. And uh, we've had four uh, literary festivals and a host of other standalone events. And this year, ever since uh, the lockdown and COVID, uh, we've had to go online. So right from April 11th onwards, we've been having uh, discussions and conversations and performances uh, almost every Saturday, sometimes also on, on a Sunday. So a whole host of things has been done. Uh, my brother-in-law, Billu, uh, whom, as I mentioned, he died really young. He was only 22. And it was in his memory that we also set up a trust, the Maja House SS Gill Trust. And we've tried to make Maja House into a very creative memorial to a beloved brother who died too soon. And uh, in many ways, his life was uh, still to begin. I'd like to extend a very, very warm welcome to our eminent speakers this evening. It's really cold and dull in Amritsar outside, but inside lights are on and we are all waiting to get into this conversation. And Sanjoy, I want to hand it over to you now. Sanjoy Hazarika, long time friend and colleague, fellow wanderer in the Northeast and a member of the Maja House SS Guild Trust. Please take it on. Thank you, Priti. And um, good evening, everyone. And uh, I'd like at first, of course, to pay our respects to the memory of F. S. S. Gill, who laid down his life for the country um, today, uh, 50 years ago. We have this evening in conversation uh, with, uh, we are in conversation with two greats, two giants, two both uh, highly awarded, if not rewarded, respected and even adored in this country with a loyal legion of supporters and followers. And as a cricketer who never grew out of school cricket and the friendly matches of journalists with uh, MPs and others, and even a journalist eleven tour of Malaysia, uh, it's an honor for me to enable this conversation. Um, alas, a virtual honor, because I'm sure there are many here who would like to get Mr. Bishan Singh Bedi's uh, autograph as well as Ram Guha's signature. Um, today, the conversation is between a historian of the game, Ram Chandra Guha. Of course, he's much more than that. He's an accomplished scholar, uh, greatly respected across the world. And um, he is a formidable, and deeply independent public intellectual. One of our finest cricketing leaders on and off the field is Bishan Singh Bedi. Captain of India in 22 tests, part of the legendary group of spin bowlers, both wrist and flight, uh, Prasanna, Chandrasekhar, himself, and Venkatrajan who mesmerized the batsmen of the world and got them out. I've been privileged to watch him play in Bombay against uh, the West Indies. Uh, and he comes out, um, of course, as a, a leader who does not suffer fools gladly, but built and led a team with sensitivity and goodwill. My job here is simple. I'm as an, here as an empire, but not as a neutral one. Because Ramchandra Goha, who is a historian, is a self-confessed partisan Karnataka supporter. 
He was an awful bat, but a decent college and school spin bowler. Uh, and uh, my job is to ask him to take guard and for Bishan Singh Bedi, whose patka we would always remember would change every day uh, in every match. And uh, the commentators would uh, be wondering which color he would wear on that particular morning to come to his brief run up and start the match. But before the first ball is bowled, I just like to say a couple of things. One is cricket is of course a great level. It's also a great team game. And for this time, during the time of the pandemic, it is actually the best game because physical distancing is inbuilt. You have 15 people in a vast arena with huge distances between them and 22 yards between the two contestants, key contestants, which is the bowler and the batsman. The second is that uh, while uh, Bedi captain India and Delhi, Ram Guha is, as I said, a fiercely partisan Karnataka supporter and uh, sees Karnataka as the bastion of all good things as far as cricket is concerned. And even Rajdeep Sardesai, with whom he's cross swords on this, because Rajdeep is a very much a Bombay person, uh, said that uh, Karnataka's players were the most decent in all of India. Uh, and I had the privilege at the Bangalore Lit Fest a few years ago. Uh, Preeti is not a cricket fan, so she did not go to that. Uh, I must tell you this. She did not go to that session. I watched Spellbound for over an hour as Prasanna, Dravid, Chandrasekhar, and Kirmani took guard as Rajdeep bowled to them. Uh, it is, this book is written passionately, passionately, with precision and great disarming honesty um, and with such attention to detail. No wonder he's a historian. Hmm. Uh, but also it, there is great attention to people's um, issues and to geography. What's north, what's south, what's east, west, what is all around. So um, I haven't gotten to the point, uh, Ram, where you talk about the IPL and the BCCI and all the games within the power, the prejudice, the corruption, and the excesses, but I hope you'll speak about that and uh, that uh, Bailey G will also reflect on it. But now the match begins. And Ram, over to you because you're both opening bowler and bat. And open. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjoy. Um, Thank you, PT, for and Mahaja House for organizing this, and thank you above, above all uh, to the great Bishan Singh Bedi, um, always a hero of mine, to now also a close personal friend uh, for for being here today. So I'll say a little bit about my book, um, The Commonwealth of Cricket, which was published last month. It's a memoir of a lifetime with cricket. Uh, you know, all through my life. Uh, I have been obsessed with the game. First uh, as a player, then as a fan, uh, then as a partisan, as a writer, and right at the end of uh, my uh, this book, as an accidental administrator. But a, a word about the title and the subtitle of the book, because they have been chosen with some care. The Commonwealth of Cricket, because this is a book about cricket at all levels. It's not only about India. It's about club cricket in Dehradun, club cricket in Bangalore, the two, home, the two towns I grew up in, about college cricket in Delhi, which was intensely competitive uh, in the 70s, about Ranji Trophy cricket, about international cricket, and also about world cricket. So it has portraits of cricketers at all levels, at the level of the school, the club, the college, the state, the country, and other countries. So it has, you know, there's a, there's a chapter in the book called A Hindu's Pantheon. And it starts with a line from the anthropologist Veria Relvin, who says that the difference, the theological difference between a Christian and a Hindu is this. The Christian believes more in God, the Hindu believes in more gods. Now, I've used this to argue <laughs> that the Indian cricket fan always had space in his mind and his heart for cricketers from other countries. So there's one chapter on my favorite foreign cricketers, and there's another chapter on my favorite Pakistani cricketers. 
uh, and it, which ends with the 11 of great Pakistanis chosen. So the Commonwealth of Cricket, because it's a cricket at all levels, uh, all spheres of the game across India, across the world. The subtitle is a lifelong love affair with the most subtle and sophisticated game known to humankind. Now, the first part of that subtitle is purely uh, factual, a lifelong love affair, my lifelong love affair. The most subtle and sophisticated game known to humankind is what I passionately believe in, in terms of artistry, technique, uh, the range of uh, options available to a batsman, a bowler, a wicketkeeper. There's no game that matches cricket, the dramatic intensity, particularly of a test match. But that term, subtle, the most subtle and sophisticated game known to humankind, is also meant as a tease to those friends of mine who admire football or golf or boxing to tell you my game is better than yours. Not my country is better than yours because I'm not that kind of jingoistic nationalist, but about my game, I am intensely partisan. Cricket is the most subtle and sophisticated game known to humankind. About my state, I'm intensely partisan. Karnataka must always, I hope, beat Bombay. About my club, French Union <laughs> Club in Bangalore, also I'm intensely partisan. Mm. Now, this book has many heroes. Towards the end, it has a few villains. But except for the two chapters about BCCI, it's an affectionate book about extraordinary uh, human beings I've admired, both as players and as individuals. The principal, the many heroes, I mean, there are dozens of heroes, probably right at the top of the list of heroes is my maternal uncle, Dore, who inspired me to take to the game. He was a left arm spinner who was tragically handicapped by a childhood accident which left his right arm uh, deformed. So with the use of one arm, he played for St. Stephen's College, the best college team in India with several, uh, alongside several Ranji Trophy players and one test cricketer. He's run the French Union Cricket Club, one of Bangalore's best clubs for many decades. And had he two, uh, had two arms and two legs, he would have surely played cricket for India. He saw his nephew, uh, his sister's son, with two arms and two legs, uh, and he made him the object of his affections, ambitions, and fantasies. So for 10 years, I tried, very, 15 years, I tried very hard to make it as a cricketer and failed. But my uncle remains an inspiration because of his character, his integrity, uh, his deep devotion to the game, and the ways in which he has nurtured many young people to become better cricketers and better human beings. So he, in some ways, is the principal hero of this book. A few notches below him comes Bishan Singh Bedi, also a left arm spinner, uh, uh, whom I first saw at the age of 16, play for Delhi against Karnataka. And during the match, he, as I described in the book, I also met him for the first time when he came to my uncle's house uh, for dinner. Uh, and then, of course, I saw him play in many contexts and very late in life, uh, we also became friends. So I've got to read out uh, a passage from this book before bringing uh, Bishan into the conversation. I'm going to read out actually two passages in this book in which Bishan figures himself. Uh, the first one is about my days playing cricket for St. Stephen's College in Delhi in the 1970s. Now, I was in the 11, which is a great achievement, uh, because it was the most, uh, arguably the best college team in India at that time. But I was by no means the best player. Above me were people who played for Delhi, under Bishan Singh Bedi, and they included two people who went on to play for India. Now, one of the people who played for Delhi, uh, I described uh, uh, in this book, and I've got to read out two paragraphs about my experiences as a college cricketer. One Stephanian cricketer, then playing for Delhi under Bedi was Rajesh Varwats. Burly, with a curling moustache, he was what was known in North India as a dada, a man you didn't want to mess with. In university cricket, what terrorized bowlers of opposing sides with his ferocious driving and their batsmen with his outswingers and sharp bouncers. But no one lived more in terror of him than the freshman cricketers of his own college. After practice ended, he would sometimes ask one of us in Punjabi to stay on and bowl at him. Come here and bowl properly to me was a call we dreaded, for that meant not only bowling to him, 
until it was so dark that we would have to walk back to college, but also that if he hit a ball a mile, as he could and would, we had to go and fetch the ball before he se we sent one another along for the same treatment. Word of Watts' university reputation, personal as well as cricketing, had reached Bishan Bedi, hmm. who thereafter re referred to him sarcastically as Pahalwan. <laughs> as Pahalwan, a Hindustani term that requires a many-worded translation in English. Perhaps the village wrestler, so this is the translation in English of Pahalwan, as said sarcastically by Bishan Singh Bedi, the Delhi Ranji Trophy captain in 1974-75. So the translation of Pahalwan, when Pahalwan was used for what? The translation would be, the village wrestler who remains undefeated I'll all beat in the village wrestling pit alone. All right. One day, when Rajeshwar Watt was away, another of our college cricketers who played for Delhi, Praveen Oberoi, told us a story that delighted us. The previous afternoon, at the Delhi Ranji Trophy Nets at the Ferocia Kotla, Bedi had caught Watt's bowling of 19 yards. You know, <laughs> he normally bowl of 22 yards, but in the Nets, no one is seen, so he can bowl of 19 yards. Bailey had caught Watt's bowling of 19 yards to make a greater impression on the batsman and therefore captain as well. Bailey warned Watts that this was counterproductive because this might lead to his being no balled in a match because he would not be practicing bowling of 20 yards. Later during fielding practice, Watts was casual and dropped a series of easy catches. His captain, Bailey, now asked the offender, or really the serial offender, to bring two bricks from a pile that lay at the end of the road, end of the ground. Watts did as ordered, not knowing why he had been asked to bring the bricks. Now, Bedi told him, carry a brick in each hand and take a round of the kotla. <laughs> bhag pehelwan bhag, said the captain, go take a round of the ground, my mighty friend. Watts bravely took out the challenge, but after running about 50 yards, sank to the turf in agony and in exhaustion. Try it if you can. Not even an Olympic wrestler can run around a large cricket ground holding a brick aloft in each hand. Now, there are other excerpts in which Bedi figures, which I might turn to later in this conversation. But Bishan, I won't ask you to recount why you tormented what's because I've, I think, uh, shamed him enough in this extract. And fortunately, I don't think my friend and old teammate Radishwar Watts is going to read this book. So uh, <laughs> he will probably not hear this. But tell us your own experiences of college cricket in Amritsar, of school cricket in Amritsar. You know, yeah. we know about all the wickets you took at test level. We know about the Ranji Trophy wins under your captaincy for Delhi. Um, the fact that you were in the India team that won a match overseas in New Zealand for the first time, West Indies for the first time, Australia for the first time. And England for the first time, surely a unique record for an Indian cricketer. But about your boyhood love of cricket, uh, I'd like to know a little more. And, you know, so, so would, I think, all our viewers today. Well, Ram, um, thank you very much. Uh, um, you have wonderful, wonderful memory, absolutely. Stunning, in fact, you know, to go from Morrigate to Melbourne, from Lords to Barbados in, in a, just a fraction of a second. And your write-up is so nice and racy. Beautiful to read. I can only, you know, wonder. I can only say Bismarck, absolutely Bismarck. But uh, talking about my initial, you know, stages of my cricketing career, I just took up this game to lose some weight, honestly. And I never had, never, ever dreamt that I'll play for the country one day. It just happened. And you see, Amritsar being a small place, there's nothing else to do. If I recollect, um, I wasn't terribly good in school or in college uh, academically, but uh, cricket uh, became some kind of an obsession in uh, or shall I say, a Junoon kind of thing, you know? We just had to go to Gandhi ground, 
and be there for good seven, eight hours a day. And all you know, one could do was to hold, get hold of a ball and keep on bowling, keep on bowling, keep on bowling. That's all. And one good day, when I, when I got the call, you know, to represent the country, I was pretty much shocked. I wasn't ready for it, not one bit. I had never seen a test match um, before. I, I mean, the first test match I ever saw was the one I played in. So it was in um, Calcutta, right? That was in Calcutta. The first, sorry? Match, the first test match you played was in Calcutta in '66. That's right, 1967, first of January. Yeah. That was that was the test match, which was also you know, the stadium was also burned down with tear gas in the dressing room. Yeah. And I can safely say it was uh, literally baptism by fire, you know. But <clears throat> I think uh, um, my spiritual belief held me together. And I was able to make the, um, you know, the strides expected of me. <clears throat> but I wasn't, I'm telling you, I wasn't prepared mentally to go any further than maybe one or two test matches. But um, I like to think, you know, the, that my spirituality, it helped me um, keep this game very close to my heart. And I've always, honestly, I'm not um, saying this very loudly, that I have my idea as a Sikh and my um, commitment with cricket, they both go hand in hand. I, I learned, um, I got a lot of uh, my Sikhi, Sikhi, Sikhism tenets from my cricketing beliefs, and I got a lot of cricket, uh, 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 my cricketing tenets from my Sikhi belief. They both go hand in hand. And it's very difficult for me to explain in a nutshell, but uh, I think uh, all said and done, um, cricket has helped me to grow as a human being. Cricket has helped me to grow um, as a person. And it's still, cricket is the reason of my living today. So, Bishal, uh, I'll come back, uh, you know, a little bit to your beliefs and your character, but that also figures in my book and your faith. But I want to st st stick for the moment uh, to, uh, to your early years. In this book, I don't relate a story which I've told elsewhere, because, you know, you could, there are only so many stories you, you should read. <laughs> Uh, in an earlier book, I tell a story which I read uh, in an interview with you, where you mm -hmm. attributed to your powers of spin. You know, Bishan had phenomenal powers of spin. Uh, he could turn the ball even on the most perfect surface. And you attributed to your childhood love of playing marbles and kancha, kancha, and how you develop yeah. your, your fingers. And you yeah. said in that interview, you beat everyone in Amritsar playing kancha, and you had a collection of 10,000 marbles. Is that true? Or a bit of an exaggeration? No, that's true. That's true. <coughs> because... so tell us about how kancha made you a great spinner. Well, you know, with these marbles, you, you, the spinning process of a marble, because it's, it's quite a... a, a it's not rough at all. So if you can spin a marble, I think uh, you can spin a cricket ball, surely. <laughs> so you, you, know, you spun, spun the marble, you spun the cricket ball. Oh. You played for, we played for Punjab. And then, yeah. Yeah. Marble, it was quite a normal thing to do at Amritsar when you're young. And, yeah. you know? and it was, because it was, sure. And the nice thing was, in those days, there was no television, there was no smartphones. Nothing. You could get out in the street play. But to come, yeah. the only entertainment, uh, Ram, Ah. If I can think of us on Wednesdays was uh, this Binaka Geet Mala, I mean Sahinis. Okay. Yeah. That is that is all like we could think of listening to. Look look forward to it. But that was after being, you know, absolutely uh, fagged out, bowling day in and day out. So one Wednesday evening from <clears throat> eight to nine, we used to look forward to the transistor, listening to the main Sahinis. So, you know, so from Amritsar, you, play, you, you know, you play for your university, you play for your, your college, your university, yeah. you play Ranji Trophy, you play for North Zone, 
and if memory serves, you're chosen for India after taking six wickets uh, against the West Indies in a match in Delhi That's for the North Zone. Yeah, and I then you're chosen for India. And then you move, <clears throat> and then yeah. you move to Delhi. And I don't know what to ask you, Bishan, because you know a, a, my book is a lot about Ranji Trophy. You know, mm -hmm. Bombay won 15 years in a row, yeah. uh, and uh, after that, we, that is Karnataka, beat Bombay, and then Delhi got into the act. And you nurtured the Delhi team from nowhere. You made them a fighting force. I mean, not just college cricketers like Arun Lal and Hari Gidwani and Sunil Walson, but senior cricketers you got from elsewhere. You know, you got. Chetan Johan from, from Maharashtra, uh, you got the Amarnath brothers and Madhalal from Punjab. So, you know, that's to my mind, you know, your leadership really was manifested first in making Delhi almost the equal of Bombay. And I think under the, your leadership, Delhi won the Ranji Trophy for the first time. So, tell us a little bit about that process, you know, because well, below, below well, test level at the Ranji level. Yeah, Ram, uh, you see, uh, playing for India, and at a time when Bombay, as you mentioned, Bombay was always dominating. And sitting in the Indian dressing room, you're listening to your friends from Bombay talking in Marathi, just about all the time, you know? And uh, there was a, some urge, all right, Bombay has won it so many times. Why are we also Rams, you know? Because playing for Punjab was just going through the motions of four Ranji Trophy matches a season, that's it. Nothing beyond that. But then we got to Delhi, all, I mean, Madan, you mentioned, you mentioned Amarnath Brothers and then Pigilal and Kirti Azad and various others. They were all young and all raring to go. And I would like to think that uh, we, we wanted to send a message across to Bombay and West Zone that cricket is played elsewhere also, not just in the Western part of the country. And then also I had some difference of opinions with Ajit Wadikar and uh, Sunil Gavaskar as well, but they were part of the growing up or evolving process. And if these uh, fellows can do it, why can't we? And then once we were able to, you know, win the Ranji Trophy 1977, if I recollect, we're beating Karnataka in the finals in Bangalore, um, I think the boys felt, yes, winning is important. In fact, winning is the only thing. But I like to emphasize winning by fair means. Not, not uh, winning at any cost, but winning by fair means. That is very, very important. And this is where I feel uh, I might have gained uh, from my cricketing guru, Gyan Prakash uh, from Amrissa. Um, he taught us the basic values of playing fair and playing honestly. And uh, I, I have never forgotten those, uh, you know, values that, yes, cricket is... Now, if I was to ask you, Ram, why is it, there's an English proverb, this is not cricket, Yeah. right? If we never say this is not hockey, this is not golf, this is not tennis, this is not football, this is not swimming, this is not athletics, only cricket, why? I think you're right, because, I mean, at least in theory, even if it is not always uh, obeyed in practice, in theory, you play with a straight back. You know, there's a story in my book of my playing for uh, Doon School for Dehradun against, uh, uh, against Masuri. And mm -hmm. I took five wickets and the, the number eight in of the Masuri side batted for an hour. Mm -hmm. And he was an American called Tom Alter, who later became a famous actor. And I asked him, I said, for an American, you play with a very straight bat. And he said in Hindustani, Cricket or Zindagi uh, 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 maybe or cricket maybe straight back ke ilawa kya hai. Right. Now, now that's a beautiful, it's a filmy line, but I actually yeah. heard it on a cricket field in Dehradun. Yeah. And you've always played yeah. cricket and live life uh, with a straight back. And uh, you know, you, you talk about Gyan Prakash, and there's another story in my book about how after leading Delhi to several Ranji Trophy uh, victories, you retired. And then many years later, you started coaching your native state, Punjab. And there was an opening batsman whose name I won't mention, who queried uh, the umpire's decision. The umpire gave him out and he called him a few choice names in Punjabi. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a great language for calling an umpire choice names. And the umpire was upset. And you dropped that fellow for the next match. 
right and they still want and, and they want they want punjab won the tournament they won the ranji trophy for first time when you were coach and you were watching with your mentor gyan prakash next to you right it was a beautiful moment you know because it is kind of a, from you know, handing over from your guru to your chelas at punjab won the ranji trophy for the first time so you can you know you can you can win and play fair at the same time you know um, my father's name was gyan singh bedi okay. and my cricketing guru was gyan prakash so i can i can claim that i i i i was very fortunate i was privileged to have you know a lot of gyan from both of them mm-hmm. and uh, both of them emphasized the importance of playing fair in life not just on the cricket field you know and well i i'm very proud of the fact that uh, i grew up in a very beautiful atmosphere where there was no no chance whatsoever of uh, you know climbing over somebody else's shoulder yeah. to gain anything you just had to work for it and then be patient patience is a virtue which i might have acquired in my earlier days in amritsar well as a spin bowler you have to be patient <laughs> you got to be you got to be patient to be honest yeah. as a human <laughs> being be. yeah yeah and then i was also very fortunate to have but you know pick the brains of uh, people like arapali prasanna and chandra and venkat venkat particularly um they were brilliant all of them were brilliant bowlers they were highly intelligent people and uh, I, you know qualification wise they were all qualified engineers yeah. i was the only third class graduate in the in this quartet you know Oh, and okay. Chandra, Chandra, I told Chandra was like you, I think. Because Prasanna and Nekka do both qualified engineers. Chandra was brilliant in his, on on his day, and that you know we we've been reading about the hand of God since Maradona passed away. But yeah. the real, in my mind, the real hand of God was Chandra's. Yeah. Still, yeah, yeah. Uh, he he was simply unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the man couldn't throw with his right hand. Yeah. But he could run through batting lineups. the world could offer you know yeah, yeah. i mean yeah chandra was the greatest match winner i have known you know, so talking about spin bowling you know uh, and you know this kind of camaraderie that you had with your with your with your uh, you know fellow members of the quartet but when you get to ranji trophy you played very fiercely but I mean, when you played karnataka you were not giving an inch to prasan lion chandrasekhar right and that was nice i mean those rivalries the state rivalries i think nurtured indian cricket in a way which is now forgotten you know that's why we started winning overseas and bombay's losing the trophy was very good for in indian cricket because other regions grew strong and the game got decentralized it got democratized and i think we became much better as a cricketing nation because of uh, the fact that bombay was not winning all the time you know i think that's something which a new player important role in that that's right absolutely you know you know this it is important to get bombay out of the shackles of winning continuously you know and karnataka gave us a lead then we were fortunate to have a young side who was raring to go and mind you delhi has had much better sides before us you know people like rajendra pal and manmohan sudh and prakash bandari and, and um, uh, prem bhatia gulshan rai all these fellows but delhi also couldn't go beyond at that time um, one or two knockout stages um well i think uh, i'd like to credit our rivalry with the west zone mm. delhi getting you know all keyed up to get the better of bombay and and the west zone you know uh, bishop you uh, i want to ask you a technical question about spin bowling yeah. you know, uh, i feel that you know one of the changes in the game from your time has been covered wickets Mm-hmm. now every night the wicket is covered and i understand uh, you know because you don't want to use lose um, time to rain the next day and uh, uh, you know your television rights spectators have to watch but the art you know for example the art of playing spin on a sticky wicket uh i know uh, there's a incident described in my book about a county match mm-hmm. where you were bowling to majid khan That's who was the fabulous player of spin And I think he got to 60, and then he got him out stumped. So it must be a great, I don't know, sticky wicket. But the ball is turning and jumping. 
that yeah. kind of thing has gone out. So do you do you miss that? Do you I mean, do you have regrets about covered wickets? Although I understand that you need covered wickets because of. Uh, no, covering uh, of the wicket now is not the wickets. The entire ground is covered these days, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Derek Underwood would have never earned the name Deadly had yeah. the wickets been covered when he was playing. You know, the, uh, the charm of, uh, okay, it's a batsman's game, but every now and then once when you get the sticky dog, so you get on top of the batsman. That is the beauty of this game. I remember um, Jeffrey Boycott, you know, he, he was a great player, no doubt about it. Hmm. But if there was anything in the wicket or if it rained overnight, you could see the bugger, uh, oh, not terribly happy padding up to go in. Uh. No. So they were, they were, uh, now, even Bradman, Hadley Verity got Bradman out quite a few occasions. But at that time, the wickets were, uh, definitely uncovered. Now they are covered com because of commercial reasons, right? And I think the present lot of cricketers are far more fitter, far more stronger, and far more committed than maybe what we were. Yeah. Because they are playing three formats of the game: twenty and fifty overs, and then uh, the test matches. But my only, um, you know, uh, complaint or the only concern is that the present cricketers don't even make an effort to turn up for the states. I would like to know when uh, Virat Kohli played his first uh, last Ranji Trophy match. Yeah, you know, and they, this is this is only reflective of uh, the system which allows. But they're all contracted players. Yeah, they contract. You know, the one, two, and three slabs. I mean, I have nothing against players being contracted. I would like them to get more money for playing and not for not playing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's, and, that's, yeah, that's very true. You know, I, again, in my book, I quote Jawagal Sina, who yeah. said that one of his few regrets was mm -hmm. not bowling to Tendulkar in a Ranji match. You know, yeah, you bowled to Gavaskar, you bowled to Bishwara, and you had to test your skills against your greatest Indian teammates. Now, I, if, if there was a Bombay versus Karnataka match and Tendulkar was batting and Kumle and Srinath were bowling to him, I would travel a million miles to watch that contest. Right? So yeah. much of much, and Australia that way has kept the Sheffield scene sacrosanct. sacrosanct. You know, yeah. you, you do play all, 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 all your matches there. What, what, one last question about, about bowlers versus batsmen. You know, I, I'm a partisan of bowlers. I'm a partisan of Karnataka, but I'm a partisan of bowlers over batsmen. When I, when I can't sleep, I dream of Wasim Akram and Shane Warnes and their beautiful actions. I believe bowlers need to get much more credit. Uh, and batting, you know, for example, okay, I can, I can understand, I can understand uh, covered wickets because of commercial reasons. But the bats have become so good, Bishan. You know, the old oh, days, yeah. when, when yeah. Prasanna, Prasanna beat someone in the flight, that person yeah. was caught at mid-off. I mean, I remember, I, I remember vividly seeing, I don't know whether you remember, I remember some of your dismissals and Prasanna's dismissals probably better than you. Yeah. I remember a test match in the Kotla in 1974, December, and Prasanna beat Bernard Julian, who was a very fine attacking batsman, yeah. West Indian, yeah. in the flight. And you caught him low at mid-off. I don't know if you remember that. But yeah. today, with the bats today, that would have gone for six. That miss hit would have gone for six. So, you know, Prasanna, so this is, I think, these bats, which are like, uh, you know, it's a victory of technology over skill. The bat today is a victory of technology over the bowler skill. I think that has to be witnessed. Well, you can say that, but uh, yeah, the credit must go to the manufacturers. The quick, uh, cricket equipment has improved so much. It's unreal, honestly. I once asked, not too far, too long ago, I asked Sir Garfield Sobers. You know, I said, uh, would you be, Sir Garfield, would you wear a helmet today? And he said, ah, oh, if you know me better, never wore a bloody tie pad, you know, <laughs> what is this bad for? <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, this, uh, you see, if you look around, the sense of preservation for the human race has improved enormously. Yeah. So this is the same thing just coming on the cricket field. 
But again, my, my, my query is that if and when you are available to play for your state, why shouldn't you? Yeah. Because that is, that's the only ladder which you climbed to get to the top. Yeah. And then you've thrown the ladder away. So what goes up must come down. Yeah. So when you're going to come down, you're going to really come down with a thud because there's no, uh, no ladder to help you come down. Yeah. Can, can I just ask a question, Ram? Um, so let me just read out one excerpt and then I'll hand over to you. Uh, yeah. No, sure. okay. I just want to read one last uh, excerpt from my book because yeah. Vishen talked about his faith and his cricket. Now, um, I'm not a Sikh, but I, I think I've also been influenced uh, in my life by my encounters with cricketers. Vishen Bailey and my uncle Dore, you know, people of great character and integrity and an absolutely erect spine, you know. So, uh, not to compromise, to hold steadfast to your principles, to value, uh, you know, uh, your principles above uh, sheer greed is something that Bishan and my uncle Dore, who's another hero of this book, have practiced both in their personal life, in their family life, and in their professional life. So I'm going to read out one last story about Bishan Bailey, and then I'm going to hand it over to Sanjoy uh, to conduct the rest of the discussion this evening. And this is the end of a chapter called Handshakes with Heroes. It's a yeah. chapter yeah. about 11 great cricketers whose hands I shook, uh, including Farooq Engineer, Vijay Hazare, uh, M.A.K. Pataudi, Pauli Umrigar, S. Venkat Raghavan, Kapil Dev. The 11 of them and the 11th and last in this chapter is Bishan Bedi. I tell a few stories about him and I'm going to read out just one paragraph from that chapter in my book. I have many stories about Bishan Singh Bedi. One which I particularly cherish relates to a visit I made to Kabul, where our ambassador, who was a cricket fan, India's ambassador to Afghanistan, who was a cricket fan, expressed interest in inviting a famous Indian player to inspire and coach young Afghans. And, uh, you know, the ambassador actually wanted uh, to try and get Rahul Dravid. I told him that Dravid was still playing at this time, 2009. And active cricketers would not risk a trip to a land subject to regular terror attacks. And so they should ask a retired player to come instead. Various names were discussed between the ambassador and me, one of whom was Bedi's. And the ambassador said, please ask Bishan Singh Bedi. When I returned to India, I called my hero turned friend who's with, here, with us today. And I asked Bedi if the invitation came through at a convenient time, whether he would be willing to go. Why not? Answered the Sadar of spin spontaneously, anywhere for cricket. Now, it turned out that they, this thing fell through and the, 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 the mission did not have the money to invite him. But why not? Answered the Sadar of spin spontaneously, anywhere for cricket, anywhere for cricket, when the unspoken motto of Summer Bailey's former teammates is anywhere and anything for money. So thank you, Bishop, for everything you've been on the field and off the field. Thank you. Anjali. Thank you, ma'am. You've been very kind, very, very kind. And I hope this is not your last cricketing book, though. No. I think it might be. But anyway. you, you, you still have uh, plenty more in your, uh, you know, brainy computer. You have lots more to offer to our society. I hope you'll continue doing it. And I, I, I completely agree. I mean. Uh, there were, I actually wanted to make a comment before opening it up to the to the uh, to the Q and A. Uh, one is, I think the ambassador to Kabul was your ex teammate, uh, classmate, uh, college mate, Gautam Mukhopadhyay, who figured, <laughs> who uh, won that match for uh, Dune School. Uh, and uh, but I think what uh, a lot of what's come out uh, both in your book and the conversation is the decentralization of power. Of this of uh, Bombay, you know that this one region held power for so long in the cricket arena, and now it has become much more democratic and decentralized. I think that's one thing that comes out very clearly in the conversation. And the other is um, uh, the fact that there was a time. This point that uh, Mr. Berry makes about uh, the Ranji Trophy that you that's one way up. How many of the stars do they play for their state? I mean, uh, Dhoni does still, I guess. And uh, uh, But 
you know, we used to go long distances to watch Ranji Trophy matches because you couldn't get to a test match because they were held in the big mega cities and you couldn't get away from school or college or whatever it was. But you could go and watch a Ranji match where 10, 15, 20,000 people would watch. And it was actually a great energizer and a great uh, learning experience for those of us who sat through those three, three days. Uh, but I'll uh, open it up uh, to other bowlers in the audience. Anybody who wants to bowl spin or pace, I think uh, you have uh, two who are not very good batsmen, but two. One is an outstanding bowler and captain, and the other is uh, uh, a reasonable bowler and a historian. So please. Uh, so ask there, your question. I'll have, there are a couple of questions on the chat, I'm, uh, which I'll ask uh, Bishan first. But first, Bishan, answer Sanjoy's question. Who is the greatest batsman you ever bowled to, apart from Sir Garfield Sobers? Oh, quite a few. Uh, uh, Ram, uh, Chapel Brothers for start off, and uh, then Ken Barrington. I think all four of us felt Ken Bar Barrington was perhaps the best player of spin bowling. Um, then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Majid Khan and Mushtaq Muhammad of Pakistan. Um, uh, we had uh, um, Clive Lloyd, Kali Sharan, Rohan Kanhai. They were all brilliant players. But in, 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 domestic, in domestic cricket, in Ranji Trophy cricket, who was the Batsman you feared most while bowling to him? I would like to think G.R. Vishwanath was the best he bowled to. Ah. Well, uh, we are okay. We have, I've played against um, Sunil Gavaskar as well, you know. Ah. But uh, uh, Sunil Gavaskar at times, um, one could visualize that, yes, you could get him out. But Vishy was... Uh, um, if I say this, you didn't want Vishy to get out. It's such a delight to watch, yeah. you know. <laughs> it was the same thing as, as uh, you know, bowling to Sagafil Sobos. Yeah. It was, it's a treat to be punished by him. Delight, absolute delight. Because, uh, so, yeah, so there's a, there's a story about Vishy I tell in this book for the first time, and allow me to tell it. You know, uh, it's, someone asked him, this was a club centenary in Bangalore. This was a club centenary of the Bangalore United Cricket Club for which Dravid and Kirmani and Roger Bini played, and Vishwanath mm -hmm. was there, and I was there. Mm -hmm. And someone asked Vishi, you were such a gentleman on the field. You never mm -hmm. slashed anyone. You know, now, if you see today, the people calling people uh, names all the time. Why were you such a gentleman? So Vishwanath told the story. He said he was playing a first division match in Bangalore mm -hmm. for State Bank. Yeah. For the other team was a fast bowler called Rajapa, who also played for Karnataka, who lived on the same street as Vishi. And Vishy and he had grown up playing tennis ball cricket together. They were on the same street. They were on opposite sides uh, uh, in, in a club match. And Rajapa thought he had Vishy LBW first ball. And Vishy told him, go ask the umpire. Don't. And he, then he hit him for four. Next ball, Vishy hit Rajapa for four through the covers. And then pointed to Rajapa and said, look at the ball where it's gone. And then he <laughs> said, this childhood friend of him, hmm. after that, would not look at him on the street, would cross the road. For a month, he did not talk to Vishwanath. <laughs> and he said, cricket, you, you cannot lose friends because of cricket. So he never slanged anyone afterwards. It was not because he was such a nice guy, but it was only a game. And his childhood friend was no longer his friend because he slashed him in a club match. So, so that was the <laughs> kind, kind of man Vishwanath was. Okay, not, uh, we have two, two, two or three questions. One is uh, from Gautam Mukhabad there who figures in the book, apart from many others. Tell us about the great fielders. Of, I'm going to read out two or three questions. Yeah. One is, uh, tell us about the great fielders of your time. There's somebody who says um, that, uh, uh, what was the secret of your you know, accuracy? Because you could uh, bowl almost on the same spot uh, on the coin as it were uh, for, for hours together. Um, and uh, there is one question, I think, from uh, any anecdote from Zorab Asif. Zorab Asif, any anecdote from your visits to Pakistan? Mr. 
<laughs> so let's take those three. So let me let me say something about fielding. Then I ask Pishan to speak about Pakistan. You know, Gautam Mukhopadhyay, who asked this question and who figures in this book, was my captain of the house team I played for in Doon School, and he remembers me as the worst fielder who played for that team. So you know, oh. I as a as a horrible fielder, I appreciate great fielding, and uh, the, the great improvement in the game today is that every Indian can field. Again, if I may invoke a memory of Vishen Singh Bedi. Yeah. In the same match in 1974, uh, the, in which uh, against the West Indies, there were 11 Indians on the field. Vishen no. Bedi was the only average fielder. There no. were four. Let me finish. Let me finish. Average fielder. There were four disastrous fielders who were called Prasanna, Parthasarthi Sharma, Hebat Kalitkar, Hebat Kalitkar, and, B and, and I forget the four. There were four disastrous fielders. There were four great fielders, but they were in the in the leg trap. There was Abid Ali, Venkat Raghavan, and Eknath Solkar. And, and, and Brijesh Patel was in the outfield. Now, this is a true story, by the way. Yeah. Kali Charan was batting against Bedi, and <laughs> he mistyped the drive. Yeah. And it went high in the air. Yeah. And Bishan, as the bowler, bowler shouted, Brijesh! Brijesh! <laughs> because Brijesh was the only person in the outfield who would catch it. Bishan wanted the wicket. He was terrified. If Prasanna goes for the... <laughs> so, today, today, our Ashwin does not have to shout Virat because everyone will catch the catch. Is that true, Bishan? That's a great difference. Yeah, well, I tell you what, the best fielder during our time, outfield, it had to be Tiger Padodi. I haven't seen, even today, I haven't seen a better mover. You know, this, we, we, we're watching these sliding and... Um, Chasing the ball and sliding. He started the Tiger, honestly. Tiger was a brilliant athlete and uh, he had a terrific arm. He would throw the ball from the boundary parallel to the stumps. And uh, my first test wicket, if I recollect, was uh, caught Patodi ball myself, Basil Butcher. He played me over extra cover and for a moment I thought, oh, it's another four. Okay? The tiger threw his cap down and went back, ran backwards. And just as the ball was going to drop down, tiger leapt in the air and plucked the ball literally from thin air. I can't, I, honestly, that, was, that catch I can never forget. And I've seen tiger fielding in a particular position, mid wicket or short extra cover, to get a man run out. He was outstanding. But then we had closing catches like Solkar, Abid Ali, you mentioned. Vadikar himself was a terrific catcher. So was Sunil Gauskar, Vishwanath too. They were, all, they were all brilliant catchers. Yes, we had uh, three or four, and I'd say myself included, who had to be hidden sometimes. <laughs> but then we, I think I'd like to also mention here that somewhere along the line, we might have pulled our weight in the side in the capacity as bowlers. Yeah. So tell us about some memories of Pakistan, Bishan. That was one question. Pakistan, oh, Pakistan. Pakistan was a horrible tour, if I may say so. Horrible in the sense that we weren't prepared mentally, uh, while Pakistanis were all geared up. The entire nation, it's a very hostile tour, right from the public, the media, everybody. And, you know, by the end of the tour, then the prime. I remember this thing in Agwaikot, who was the manager. This was in Sahiwal. I told him, I said, please, um, tell the prime minister to come and captain this team. You know, it is, it's, it's the playing conditions. It's so um, hostile, it's unreal. But then I had some pleasant memories also. I made many, many good friends who are friends still. I can, uh, you know, talk to them from Lahore and Islamabad. But the one thing which I remember vividly, that we were both talking to General Zia. General Zia was a very grim kind of a person who never, never laughed in his lifetime. And uh, <clears throat> we were introduced to him in, uh, in yeah, Islamabad. Indians were playing against uh, President Slave. Uh, yeah. And Sunil Gavaskar was captaining that side. And I was having a game off. But something happened between Sunil and uh, Safraz Nawaz. Uh, Sunil decided to kill the game. He didn't declare. So 
the game, beat it out in a draw, very miserable draw. Fair enough, the media got after us. Uh, in the evening, we were going to be introduced to General Zia. Um, and in his presidential palace. And I still remember that uh, we were all lined up. Um, General Zia, you know, was, had his hard shoe sole was, you know, there wasn't rubber sole, I remember, because the wooden floor made that distinct sound, tuck, tuck, tuck kind of thing, you know. And from a distance, he didn't even, and he says, Pay the shop. You know? And then he came and shook hands with me. And I said, General, um, how do you expect me to declare I wasn't even playing this game? You know? Oh, no, 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 no. He said, if I was the Indian captain, I would have declared, declared at 12 o'clock. Then he left, shook hands with two other guys. And I said, let me see. I yelled at him. I said, excuse me, General. And he came back. And I said, General, I don't think I would have declared at 12 o'clock. Terribly delicate timing for me, you know. <laughs> General Zia had a massive laugh. Massive is the word. That's the only time he's ever laughed. <laughs> so, so the press got after me in Pakistani media, you know, they got after me. He said, what did you tell this man? Because he's such a grim person. He's never laughed. So what did you tell him? I said, no, nothing, nothing in particular. So, but Pakistani, you know, the, when they get after you, they, they really mean it. And eventually I had to get them off my back. I said, yes. I asked the uh, general Zia, I said, Sadar Banna, don't I get it? On another occasion, you know, we were in Lahore. Again, Mushi was there, Mushi, the Pakistani captain. And I said, how do you feel our country? General Zia said. So I said, how do you feel our country? He said, how do you feel our uh, you know, you can have four wives very comfortably. I think it agrees with me, you know. And I'm, and I was just telling myself, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, converting myself to Islam. So, Mushi, Kharawa, Pass Kharata, get there. Ah, sir, man, it's a bola. So, Muslim, man, I'm going to be a little bit of a So, these, these are the, you know, these are the, um, I can laugh at these things now, but on the cricket field, we weren't prepared. Let us be honest. We weren't prepared the way Pakistanis were. And also, Pakistanis were a much better side. While our main attack, which was the spin attack, we were on the decline for sure. That is, there's no two opinions about it. But Pakistanis used every possible trick they had up the sleeve uh, to ensure that they won the series, which they did. And there were times when I could genuinely question them, is it cricket? We are playing, especially yeah. in Saiwal and uh, on another occasion in uh, yeah one of the places. I remember um, Shukat Rana was our throughout the tour, and in Saiwal, I remember. I think, uh, Mr. Berisa, B- your your uh... you lost it. So, yeah, I think he'll have to come back again. But um, so I, the couple of other questions. There's, there's a question on the IPL and money. Yeah. From so that's from Nafte Sarna, yeah. who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, who was uh, a school friend of mine well before he became a distinguished diplomat and um, uh, and writer in in Cameron Hall in Dehradun. And he uh, Nafte asks, I still and also incidentally since this is a Maja house. Um, uh, you know, function, apart from being a distinguished, distinguished writer, a son of a very distinguished Punjabi novelist mm-hmm. and short story writer, as you know. So, Navtej says... He, he, I, to, uh, actually, Maja House has spoken yeah, a few times. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll still live in the cricket of the time of the spin quartet, but I can't bear to watch IPL. There is no fun when the only loyalty is money. Uh, how do our two speakers feel on this? I mean, I can only speak for my, myself, but, you know, I detest the IPL. I can't watch it because it is so, you know, for aesthetic reasons. You know, some of the cricket is interesting. And I am perfectly willing to be convinced that 2020 has brought new skills into the game. New strokes, uh, new bowling techniques. The fielding has improved. But the screaming, the shouting, the garish uh, 
you know, kind of whole attitude of the game and the corruption involved. I mean, two the two main promoters of the IPL, Lalit Modi and Vijay Malia, are in exile overseas because. So I think, but I know I'm in a minority. I know it's kind of they over overtaken the Indian fan, and uh, you know, I just glory in watching Test cricket. Yeah, um, I hope they are going to get Derisa uh, back into the into the game. Um, I I have a a question uh, for uh, uh, Ram and uh, uh, if me Mr. Vedi wants to is able to come back to the game is uh, Ram, would you describe yourself more? Are you happier being a cricket historian? Than a historian, what? How would you want, yeah, to be known as? Because you're so passionate, and you live this like every moment of your life. I don't know how it works out in the family, but <laughs> I see that at one point in your book you say that your wife and daughter are sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> they're distant from it. They're not enamored of it. But you and your son are completely devoted and passionate and, and live uh, this game completely. So are you a cricket historian more than a contemporary historian of our times? Who is the real Ramchandra who are here? So I, you know, I, I think uh, cricket has accompanied me all through my life. Uh, at different periods, it's been more important or less important. I think now that I've, you know, this book, in a sense, it is my last book on cricket. You know, I have nothing new to say. Uh, I always knew I wanted to write about my uncle Dore. I wanted to write about watching Karnataka become uh, the best team in India. Uh, but it wasn't until I joined the BCCI. Completely fortuitously, I was asked to join the BCCI. And I saw the darker side of Indian cricket. Then I realized that there's an arc to my cricket fandom. From a romantic youngster to an embittered old man. Now I'm no longer embittered because I've left the BCCI, I've gone back to being a fan. But it's, a, it's not really, I mean, it's like for other people, something else. It could be photography. I mean, uh, you know, there, there could be people who have other professions and are passionate about photography or about classical music, uh, for example. Uh, so for me, cricket is secondary, but it's, it's been part of my life from the time I was a little boy. And uh, you know, now that I've written this, I'll go back to writing serious and scholarly books, which maybe I one can also discuss in Maja House. But it's it's I won't say it's the most important thing in my life, but it's it's like a it's it is a, as I said, like for others, it is classical music. You know, I have, for example, you would have friends. I have a friend uh, uh, whom uh, say Gautam Mukhopadhyay, whom you whom you mentioned, who has had some of the most difficult am ambassadorial postings. You know, in uh, in Afghanistan in Syria, uh, in Myanmar, and he's kept, he's been kept sane through his love of classical music. You know, you know, he has extraordinary collection of music. If you ask him, you know, what was more important to you, was it your diplomatic career or your love for music? You know, he, he'd probably say both. I mean, what are the lesser known aspects of Rajiv Gandhi? We know he was a photography. We know that Rajiv Gandhi was a competent airline pilot a less than competent politician, but all through he was a first class photographer. You know, he was actually, there was a lovely exhibition of his photograph, which showed a different side to his life. Uh, and so in that sense, that's what it is to me. I mean, it's, 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 it's not part of my professional life. Occasionally I write about it. It's just, I have grown up with the sport and I revealed the aesthetics of the sport. I'm no longer, as I explained in the book, a nationalist. I don't want India to win. I want, um, you know, a great innings, a fabulous spell, something I can enjoy wherever it is coming from, a great performance. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering, uh, Preeti, are we, uh, I want to hear from Mr. Bailey before we, uh, uh, I'm very glad that, that he's back because uh, one of the things uh, we were talking before is how at this time, you know, people have become so divided and there's so many issues which have come up and whether, cricket, this one game, you know, uh, I think it's always called the Indian 11, right? Yeah. The India 11. Yeah. Uh, and Rajdeep, uh, with whom uh, 
uh, Ram has disagreements <laughs> ideologically as far as cricket is concerned, I know about others, uh, talks about democracy is relevant. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So do you see cricket as a potential uh, bridge builder uh, when the pandemic eases and whenever it does and the fact that anyway there is physical distancing in, in cricket? Cricket will always remain a unifying factor for the country. But there's nothing else. No politician unites India as well as cricket does. Let me tell you that. A little while ago, it, Ram was talking about the IPL. IPL, to my mind, is the biggest scam since uh, independence. But we are all, the whole country is besotted by this uh, wretched act of, you know. Now, you see the parliamentarians in, in the parliament, they were at, at each other's throat on various issues, but on the IPL platform, they're all one. How come? The second episode of the IPL, which was held in South Africa because of the general elections in India, no permission was sought from the finance ministry or from the external affairs. And see, I would like to know, okay, there's a lot of money involved in this IPL. I want to know where's this money coming from and where is it going? Mm. But like, you know, some of the others relief funds where there is no questions to be asked and no answers to be forwarded. IPL, to my mind, is it remains the biggest mystery, you know, and uh, that is one of the reasons I'm not a great fan of IPL. Plus, the fact that you know the basic character of the game, we're destroying it by you know converting it from. You now in England, they're thinking in terms of having ten overs, hundred balls, or something ridiculous. No, when the, this game was cricket was invented. It was invented for uh, to get England out of uh, recession, both financially and mentally. All able-bodied people were required to play this game. It was compulsory, which joined, which, which helped the nation to come together. And it is done more so in India because, uh, you know, we are cricket mad people. But having said that, I think there is still room to improve upon the character of organizing this game as well as uh, playing this game. If I may cite a small little example here, with time permits. This yeah. is uh, for Ram's information as well. I have got a beautiful uh, DVD of Sir Donald Bradman. Ram, you must listen to this. That uh, this was made when Brad Bradman was 87 years. And it is Bradman 87 note out. It's a good 95 minutes of uh, video where the old man is everything intact, his mental and physical faculties. And he could remember everything like Ram has done in his book. But towards the end, the interviewer, he asked Donald, and he says, Donald, in one word, how would you like to be remembered in one word? And Sir Donald Bradman said, integrity. I have goose pimples that I'm saying that. Yeah. One word. How many of us living in India, whether in power or not in power, or cricketers in particular, can say that? Integrity is very important. And one of the, I remember 67, 68 trip to Australia, one of the official functions, Sir Robert Menzies had mentioned, he said, this world would have been a much happier place to live in had America and Russia played cricket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe now America and China. Now America and China. America and China. That, that's a lovely line. That's a lovely line. I'm going to steal it from one of my, one of my columns. But Bishan, I want to ask you, since you've come back, a cricketing question that has come from one of the viewers today, a very important cricketing question. I'm just going to find it. Give me a minute. Yeah. Good from T. Vijay Kumar. Could Mr. Bedi explain the difference 
between Prasanna and Venkat Raghavan as off spinners? I'd love to. That's a lovely question, and you only you can answer it. No, well, they're, they're both great bowlers. But one was slightly more craftier than the other. Craftier in the sense that uh, um, Adapali, I still pick his brains. I call him often. Venkat was uh, more of an individual. But when, uh, when it came to you know, team meetings, he would share his... Uh, let me tell you this lovely story about Banks. Please. Um, he was umpiring a test match at the Oval when the Sri Lankan of Spina got 16 wickets, you know. Um, so I, I was in London that time and I happened to ring up Banks. I said, Bank, what, what about the 16 wickets then? And Banks said, oh, Pesh, Shazam, Kusun, they got 16 very run outs, you know. And I, I said, yeah. oh, why didn't you call? You know, you were umpiring. I said, why should I stick my neck out? Let a white man do it. I said, you timid South Indian, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But, he took it very but you know, to, to go back to you know, this is a you know, I am from Karnataka and Venkat was from Tamil Nadu, and that was the great rivalry in our zone. So, uh, and my Tamil friends always complained that Prasanna was picked too much. We Karnatikas always say Venkat was picked too much. And though Prasanna was, I think, the better bowler, Venkat was also a fabulous fielder. So, I think that is probably they're both tremendous team men, let me tell you that. Terrific team men. Uh, but as a fielder, Venkat as a fielder. Venkat, yeah, Venkat was a good, very good closing catcher. Uh -huh. And I've seen him taking catches with his right also, you know. Uh, but but uh, Venks was, uh, Venks is the only, only cricketer who's played, captained and umpired at Lords. Yeah. Only okay. first-class cricketer. Uh, that's amazing, yeah. Okay, uh, I think we probably are coming to the close of this very, very amazing, wonderful, fabulous session between two giants uh, of the game, truly. You know, one is a historian, the other is a leader, thinker, and uh, player. Um, I have one thing that I would like to share is that since I am the, the director of what's called the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, I think I would really like to pitch for a Commonwealth team. There was a long time ago that there was there was actually a Commonwealth eleven. Uh, Ram, you probably remember when? I don't think it's come to India for a very long time. And I think three tours in the fifties, three tours, three Commonwealth tours of India in the fifties. We yeah. had in India. Yeah. yeah, and I think it'd be a good thing perhaps to try and revive that. And maybe uh, when things are better, we might have a Commonwealth veterans so as much as a Commonwealth eleven. Because the 11 may be more money minded, the veterans may be a bit more integrity and uh, gain. -minded. But uh, thank you both for this wonderful thing. I think everybody's enjoyed it. And uh, we have people who've tuned in from various parts of the world, including uh, my former research um, assistant from Geneva, oh, nice. uh, who is listening in and watching, and various other people. But uh, I'd like to thank you both. And I want to thank Maja House, of course. And I want to hand it over now to Arvinder uh, Chamak, who is curating uh, this session along with Preeti to give closing remarks. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sanjay. Right. Thank you so very much. Indeed, it was a wonderful uh, session, a deep insight, not only on the cricket, but of course, uh, on the overall philosophy of the life, how to live the life, how to lead the life, how to have, uh, how to have the balance in the life. And uh, I must compliment Ramaji uh, for, uh, and I'd like to have a copy of your book. Uh, you know, if it is available on the Amazon, I'll just order it today. Hazreen, Guru Nanak Sahib Di Kul Yeah, the Commonwealth of the Cricket. I, I, I would definitely get it. Guru Nanak Sahib Di Kul De Vichyo E Chota Jaya Bedi Jinnu Vishu Kende San Aaj Puri Dunia De Vich Aapne Naam Nali Nahi Aapne Os Kam Kar Ke Jaanaya Janda Hai Aur Tohanu E Jaan Ke Tohanu E Dasan Lagya Mainu E Fakhar Me Soos Hunda Hai Ke Jado Asi Chote Si Baki Gaar Me Baaj Kehda Jado Asi Chote Si Saanu E Nisi Pata Hunda Ke Enu Baller Kende Hai अक्सर असी क्रिकेट खेलने लगे हैं एक दूसरे ने कहने से भी आज बेदी तू बन जा ते क्रिमानी तू बन जा we would not know that uh, uh, it's the baller we would always consider that uh, uh, बेदी means a baller and क्रिमानी means uh, you know the person who is it was a wicket keeper 
So they would they would be in the brand of message. They would be known as uh, you know the trademark for the thing. Or putli kar di gali number two, ten de vicho, bachpan niya, chotiya chotiya pulanga putda. ये बिशन सिंह आज साढे सारे अंदर दिलाने बीच एक सम्राट बन के राज कर रहे हैं। थैंक यू थैंक यू। बेनु फखर भी है इस गल्ले के गांधी ग्राउंड दे ओ इस खूबसूरत मैदान दे बीच जिसे ये सात तो आठ घंटे रोज प्रैक्टिस कर दे सन एक वक्त सानू में मिले हैं जब ऐसी कॉलेज पढ़ दे सी थे ये सारे प्लेयर्स बेदी साहब ये सारे एक इंटरनेशनल सारे मैच सी ये थे तो उन्होंने ये साड़ी को आए थे कुछ बॉला एस खूबसूरत बॉलरों के ढांढ में मौका मैंने भी मिला एंड आई स्टिल चेरिश एंड आई स्टिल चेरिश डोज मोमेंट्स एंड आई हैव यू नो ऑटोग्राफ व्हिच बेदी साहब वुड ऑलवेज एक वो थम इम्प्रेशन होएगा बट देन दैट मैंने लग रहा है कि वो माजा हाउस से सारे सेशंस दे बिचो हूँ तक दे टोटल सेशंस दे बिचो चाहे वो फिजिकल फॉर्म दे बिचो है ने चाहे वो सारे ऑनलाइन वेब ने फॉर्म दे बिचो है ने एक गल बहुत बहुत डूंगी ते बहुत बड़ी सारे अनुभव एक चंजोड़न वाली कह गए कि हाउ वुड यू बी हाउ वुड यू � Indeed, is doing wonderful job for the promotion of literature, and uh, thanks to our Brigadier General in Chief Preeti Ji, I would always say Brigadier General in Chief because she is our mentor and she is taking the torch. And uh, we have been able to cultivate uh, this, you know, this uh, literature, uh, you know, uh, in this the small city, Ambedkar, jethon Bibi Saab gaye or Bibi Saab wapas to see how. आज भी पुत्री कर दे विच स्कूल पामे सरकारी है गवर्नमेंट स्कूल है लेकिन आज भी वो इन अंदर परिवार दे नाम ना जाने जान रहा है बेदी स्कूल दे करके और बेदी साहब ने बिल्कुल याद होएगा सिकंदरलाल सच्चर इन अंदर नेवर भी सन और इन अंदर फादर फिगर भी सन और उन अंदर कुल भी इन्हें बहुत कुछ सिख उस पर उन अपरवारां दिखो लो और इस लाख ज्ञान सिंह इन दिखो लो इसी बहुत कुछ सीखने को सारे मिले हैं सो थैंक यू सो वेरी मच द ऑडियंस एंड संजय यू रियली डिड अ वांडरफुल जॉब यू नो मॉडरिंग द सेशन एंड थैंक यू एवरीवन गॉड बेस यू ऑल एंड असी फिर छेती मिलांगे एस माजा हाउस पेटेडी <laughs> And मेरे बस से एक खास इंस्पिरेशन से बिकॉज़ आए मैं इन्हों ने फॉलो कर दिया कर दो ऑफ स्पिनर बने हैं ऐसी। थैंक यू सो मच। By the way, by the way, just before we end, allow me to just very quickly show you. There's only one photograph in the book. The photograph is of me with Kumle and Bedi. Kumle and Bedi. Kumle and Bedi. And 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 the caption is. Two great spin bowlers and another. Thank you very, very much. That has been really fascinating. I love the stories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank Thank you very much for Thank you. giving us the pleasure of your company this evening. And uh, we wish you uh, to be here in Amritsar, Bedi Sahib. Come soon. Come yeah. with your family. And uh, we will yeah. not say be our guests. साढे परिवार दे बिच्छू और साढे ही सांग। शुक्र, शुक्र। भाई ब्रो मेरे करें तो नचड़ दिया कलर। Thank you, thank you, thank you all very much for this wonderful opportunity. Goodbye from Ajay House to everyone. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye.